Today's new international version. Today's new international version, TNIV, was an English translation of the Bible developed by the Committee on Bible Translation, CBT. The CBT also developed the new international version, NIV, in the 1970s. The TNIV is based on the NIV. It is explicitly Protestant like its predecessor. The Deuterocanonical books are not part of the translation. The TNIV New Testament was published March 2002. The Complete Bible was published February 2005. The rights to the text are owned by Biblica, formerly International Bible Society. Zondervan published the TNIV in North America. Hotter and Stoughton published the TNIV in the UK and European Union. The translation took more than a decade to complete. Thirteen evangelical scholars worked on the translation Ronald F. Youngblood, Kenneth L. Barker, John H. Steck, Donald H. Madvig, R. T. France, Gordon Fee, Karen H. Jobes, Walter Leifold, Douglas J. Moo, Bruce K. Waltke, Larry L. Walker, Herbert M. Wolf, and Martin Selman. Forty other scholars, many of them experts on specific books of the Bible, reviewed the translations team's work. They came from a range of evangelical denominational backgrounds. With the 2011 release of an updated version of the NIV, both the TNIV and the 1984 NIV have been discontinued. Keith Danby, President and Chief Executive Officer of Biblica, said that they erred in presenting past updates, failing to convince people that revisions were needed and underestimating readers' loyalty to the 1984 NIV. The intent of the TNIV translators was to produce an accurate and readable translation in contemporary English. The Committee on Bible Translation wanted to build a new version on the heritage of the NIV and like its predecessor create a balanced mediating version, one that would fall in between the most literal translation and the most free, word-for-word, formal equivalents, and thought-for-thought, dynamic equivalents. For translation a wide range of manuscripts were reviewed. The Masoretic Text, the Dead Sea Scrolls, the Samaritan Pentateuch, the Greek Septuagint Tor, 70, the Aquila. Symmachus, and Theodosian, the Latin Vulgate, the Syriac Peshitta, the Aramaic Targums, and for the Psalms the Juxta Hebraic of Jerome were all consulted for the Old Testament. The Dead Sea Scrolls were occasionally followed where the Masoretic text seemed inconsistent. The United Bible Society's Nesleolent Greek New Testament text was used for the New Testament. There are a number of changes in the TNIV. Craig Blomberg stated in a 2003 paper titled The Untold Story of a Good Translation that the changes in the TNIV move in a more literal direction three times more often than not. Mark L. Strauss has stated that the majority of changes are based on advances in biblical scholarship, linguistics, and archaeology. In Matthew 1.18, where the NIV says that Mary was with child, the TNIV simply says Mary was pregnant. In Luke 12.38, the phrase second or third watch of the night employed in the NIV is changed to middle of the night or toward daybreak in the TNIV. The TNIV translators have, at times, opted for more traditional Anglo-Saxon or poetic renderings than those found in the NIV. For example, the heavens is sometimes chosen to replace the sky, as is the case in Isaiah 53, I clothe the heavens with darkness and make sackcloth its covering. At times the TNIV offers a different or nuanced understanding of a passage. For example, in the NIV, Psalm 26 3 reads, For your love is ever before me, comma, slash, and I walk continually in your truth. The TNIV reads, For I have always been mindful of your unfailing love, and have lived in reliance on your faithfulness. There are a number of changes in this one verse, but of special note is the TNIV's translation of the Hebrew word emet. The TNIV translators took this word to mean more than simple honesty in Psalm 26 3, referring more specifically to reliability or trustworthiness. Examples of other changes are truly I tell you becomes I tell you the truth, fellow workers becomes co-workers, the Jews, particularly in John's Gospel, often becomes Jewish leaders when the context makes the statement's real meaning apparent, and miracles, especially in John, become the more literal signs, miraculous signs, or works. The word for spirit, where there is a good chance it means the Holy Spirit, is now capitalized. Peter is now rendered Cephas when the Greek merely transliterates the Hebrew name. Other notable changes are that Christ has regularly been rendered as Messiah, and saints has often been replaced with terms such as God's people or believers. Among other differences from the NIV, the TNIV uses gender-neutral language to refer to people. Confessional terms for this kind of language are such as gender-inclusive. Two examples of this kind of translation decision are found in Genesis and Matthew. Genesis 1.27 reads, So God created human beings in his own image. 
Older translations use the word man to translate the word Adam employed in the Hebrew language, the same word used as the proper name of the first man married to the first woman, Eve. Matthew 5 9 reads, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Here, the Greek word Huey is translated children rather than sons as found in other modern English translations such as the New American Standard Bible and the Amplified Bible. However, the 1611 authorized King James Version also renders this passage as children rather than sons. Masculine references to God, such as father and son, are not modified from the literal translation in the GNU. Less than 30% of the changes in the GNIV involve the use of inclusive language. The GNIV's approach to gender inclusive language is similar to the New International Version Inclusive Language Edition, New Revised Standard Version, the New Living Translation, the New Century Version, and the Contemporary English Version. In the GNIV, some original Greek text references to, transliterated, are changed from the original English translation of the Jews to Jewish leaders or simply they, such as in John 18:36. This change has been called for by Jewish leaders as a way of avoiding misunderstanding in the Gospel of John. A number of evangelical scholars agree with this change. The Tniv is not alone among English Bible versions in following recent biblical scholarship on this matter. Denominations supportive of the Tniv include the Christian Reformed Church, CRC, which officially endorsed the Tniv as an acceptable translation for use, the Evangelical Covenant Church and the Free Methodist Church of North America. Scholars from the Free Methodist Church of North America had a varied response from it constitutes no threat to most accurate ever. Evangelical scholars and pastoral leaders supporting the project include Mark L. Strauss, Tramper Longman, John Ortberg, Adam Hamilton, Craig Blomberg, Daryl Bach, Don Carson, Peter Furler, Bill Hybels, Ben Witherington III, Lee Strobel, John Stott, Philip Yancey, Dan Kimball, Terry Blackstock, Erwin McManus. Ted Haggard and others. In June 2002, over 100 evangelical leaders signed a statement of concern opposing the DNIV. The Presbyterian Church in America and the Southern Baptist Convention passed resolutions opposing the DNIV and other inclusive language translations. Evangelical scholars and various public figures critical of inclusive language translations include John F. MacArthur, J. I. Packer, Jack T. Chick, Gail Ripplinger, James Dobson, Jerry Falwell. Tex Mars, Wayne Grudem, Peter Ruckman, D. James Kennedy, Josh McDowell, R. Albert Muller Jr., John Piper, Pat Robertson, R. C. Sproul, and Shoni Erickson Tata. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.